So how do you find that way to remain feminine, feel like you're being true to who you are, and still be tough? Well, you just said it. You know, I am feminine. I am graceful, thank you. And I'm tough, so it's natural. But some women aren't as feminine, which is fine if that's not you. No, that's just who they are. Too. That's just who they are, Absolutely. and that's okay. Some women, you know, don't want to put heels and a skirt on. They want to wear their tennis shoes all the time. That's fine. So for me, it, it wasn't a challenge. I'm who I am inside the ring, which is somebody with an evil streak that wants to take your head off. And outside so you of the you had that, by the way. When did you first discover you had that tough streak, <laughs> that mean streak? Well, I think that um, very young, because growing up, I was I called the I was the good bully. You grew up in L.A. Yes, I grew up in L.A. And as young as the third grade, if I saw somebody picking on somebody, I would be the one to walk up and shove them and be like, pick on somebody your own size. I would always help out. You know the people who who didn't want to fight for themselves. So I've always been a fighter. I just had to kind of redirect that sometimes. You know, it is interesting when you're doing something that's righteous. That's really a beautiful thing, and and it's a big thing today. Anti-bullying. You know, standing up. A big big thing today. We do work with my foundation. In that is. It's not enough to just stand by and watch. No, it's not. You're, you're taking action by not doing something. But when you step in and say, hey, that person's small, pick on somebody your own size, that's leadership, and that's a beautiful thing as well. Yes. I don't believe on stepping on others to make myself seem bigger. You know, I think that we have to uplift one another, and we all know that you know, it starts very young with kids when they say mean things to each other and somebody might be picking on you, that's because they don't have confidence in themselves. You know, and um, it's just something I don't like to watch even now. Layla Ali, we are just, uh, let's give her a hand. We're not even halfway done. But somebody that is so positive and so clear about themselves, you know. Also, you notice that there's so much pressure to be like somebody else, to be like somebody else. And what I hear you saying is, you know what? Listen to that inner part of you that's beautiful and strong and tough. Where did that come from? You just always felt that way, or did you, besides your father, who else inspired that attitude? I'm still trying to figure that one out, because uh, people ask that question all the time, and I think I, I, I was blessed um, to have a mother and a father that are not, they're very confident, and they instilled that in me because they made me feel like I can do anything that I want to do in life. They didn't put any limits on me. I have my own children now. I have a four-year-old. I have an 18-month-old. And that's what I'm always encouraging the parents to be careful what we say, be careful how we speak to our children. We have to uplift our children, make them feel like they can do anything they want to do because I, I did, you know, and... Um, I truly feel even now that I can do anything I want to do. It's just a matter of what I want to put my time and energy into. Um, and if I don't want to put my time and energy into something, people come to me with ideas all the time. You should do this, you should do that. And I'm like, I'm not passionate about it. And if I can't do it, I can't put my energy there. So I think that we all have to figure out what that thing is in us that's going to inspire us to be the best that we can be and never try to be like anybody else. We're all individuals, just like the leaves of a tree. And you'll know. You'll know because if it's passionate, then it is from you, right? Exactly. I'm looking over at Nona Lee, the founder of the Phoenix Women's Sports Association, and, and, and there's a sort of a sisterhood here with the, the Women's Sports Foundation that you are the president of, uh, probably because you're a great leader and probably because you are pretty good at articulating what it's about. So tell us, what is the specific mission of the Women's Sports Foundation? The Women's Sports Foundation is an organization that was founded by Billie Jean King, and um, it's just to empower and inspire girls and women through sports and physical activity, also to uphold Title IX, which is a legislation that was put in place to make sure that girls get equal play. Um, and we have lots of programs, you know, for inner city girls, for pro af I mean, for elite athletes, you know, and it's a great organization. And like I mentioned earlier, I didn't play sports when I was younger. That's a regret of mine. I understand how important that is, and that's why I got involved in, in the organization. You know, my twin sister, I have a twin sister, and we were right there on the cusp. We did not have Title IX, and I look at my sister. And, uh, in L.A. in 1986, I came out, and I was taking acting lessons and training my sister. And in 10 weeks, she lost 25 pounds, gained 10 pounds of muscle, and I thought, if she'd had time to line. Fast forward to a program called Native Vision we started 17 years ago, and we had two women's pro soccer players, and they were great basketball players. They were fearless, and I learned something right then. 
The women of Title IX have learned a fearlessness, a confidence, and it's a beautiful confidence, it's a beautiful fearlessness. Talk about that and what you see in the young people that participate in Title IX programs. Well, I think that, you know, even if you don't want to play sports and be a professional athlete, that it just helps, like you said, build confidence, you, you, relationships. We know within the inner city, you know, it keeps girls in school, keeps them from, you know, dropping out and getting pregnant or things like that. Um, a lot of the women that you see now, you know, the lawyers, the doctors that are successful played sports growing up. Um, and I'm definitely going to make sure that, that my kids participate in sports. Um, you know, I'm going to get them started early. And not, not only that, I mean, we have a problem with obesity and diabetes and kids being inactive. And, and kids are supposed to be out playing and having fun, you know, not worrying about a lot of the things that they have to worry about nowadays. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. One of the things that's uh, not around as much is unscheduled playtime for kids. Any uh, opinion about that and, you know, kids learning to develop their own games, their own imaginations? Well, I think that um, the less you're on the computer, the less you're on your iPhone and on Facebook and watching TV, then the more time you have to be creative where you will. I mean, when I, we were younger, you know, we had to go outside and use our imagination and get on our bikes and, and go play. You know, we were running around the neighborhood. We, weren't, we didn't want to be inside the house, you know. So I think that, um, I think it's up to the parents to take control and limit a lot of those activities that I just mentioned so that kids will want to go outside and play and then get out together as a family. You know, it's really important. You know, that, we want to thank all the families that have come today to support the Phoenix Women's Sports Association and the idea of true fitness. Let's talk about focusing and what you learned when you're boxing and you began to train that has helped you now in terms of how you focus in life because of your fitness, your, your mental capacity. Well, for me, I mean, anything that I do, um, first I decide that I want to do something. Then I try to find out what it takes to get from point A to B, and then I come up with a plan, okay? Then I have to be diligent and, and, and keep to that plan, regardless of what's going on, you know, every day. If I'm going to run every morning, I'm going to run every morning. If I'm going to eat, you know, if I'm going to drink a shake after I run, I'm going to do that. Then if I need to go to the gym. So it's about putting your priorities in order, having a plan, and going for it. And when you know what you want and you're reminded of that every day, it, it makes it easier to focus and not get led astray. But you definitely have to have a plan because there's always so much going on that will get in the way of your success. So, so you learn to stay true. Final question for Leila Ali is uh, the book or the person right now that inspires you the most? Uh, I am the person. I, I'll say the person. And I think that um, it's my dad, you know, and, and it has been for a long time. I know he inspires so many. And I, I think it's because, you know, obviously I don't look at my dad the same way everyone else does. But, um, you know, my dad has a disease. He has Parkinson's. And, you know, I've, I've been able to grow up with him, watch his, a lot of the same videos, the information about him as everybody else. And he said when he was younger that, you know, boxing was his platform that he wanted to be a humanitarian, he wanted to give back to people. He didn't know he was going to get a disease and it was going to be so hard for him to get around. But my dad still gets out and still does his work and still touches people and doesn't hide behind his sickness. You know, even though he used to be so strong and be able to speak and do all these things and now he just needs help eating, he needs help walking, he needs help using the bathroom. And, you know, that's very humbling, for, especially for Muhammad Ali. And, um, you know, and I know people a lot of times they see him and they feel bad, but I don't feel bad because he's still so strong and, you know, I'm, I'm just so proud of him. So he inspires me. And like, if my dad can get around and still touch people, then I can do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been truly blessed to have Layla Ali, not only for what she's done, but who she is inside now. Beautiful music. I'm going to show you what you show about Muhammad Ali. Took him to the uh, Royals Dodgers game. He's been there for four hours. He's exhausted. We're driving him out, and there's a whole crowd of 20 kids around the cars. I'm worried. What, what, what are we going to do? It's Parkinson's. He's tired. He saw the kids. He blossomed. This source from somewhere I, I couldn't imagine took him to a level of energy and love. His, he took off his sunglasses. It's hard not to get emotional about this. It was the most beautiful spirit I've ever seen, and I really realized that uh, he's truly a great person and I hope we realize this before he goes because he's been 
I think, one of the great examples of humanity, really, to ever grace this planet. And he uh, graced us with an incredible daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, Layla Ali! Thank yeah, you so much! Thank you. Thank you. Layla's going to be signing autographs right down here. Is that a great role model or what? Can I get her autograph? Beautiful, strong woman, and she's 100% authentic.